Ladies and gentlemen, how's it going? Once again, I'm your boy Nev from Nev's Tech, but today we are checking out a 10-year-old HP Compact 6000 Pro. This is something made for uh, enterprise. Really easy to go out and deploy place, but something I'm realizing about all-in-one systems is that they seem to deteriorate rapidly, and I'm amazed to find out that this is, in fact, 10 years old. Uh, this system doesn't actually have a re rear case fan, but it's complaining that it's not detected. You never had one, you silly thing. Anyways, this was finally given up because it wasn't reaching the speeds it was supposed to. It wasn't going as fast as it was supposed to. I kind of think it was because it was on wireless and not hardwired in in a place that had a bad connection. But either way, I want to do a benchmark on this and see what kind of power it's actually pulling down. We have a dual core processor on this thing, no video card, or at least, you know, onboard video card that uses the RAM. I've upgraded the hard drive to uh, an SSD, 256 gigabytes, and the RAM is upgraded from two gigabytes to eight gigabytes. In the device manager, we'll take a look at the video card. Okay, this is taking a minute. There's some things that Windows just won't upgrade, and that's um, the card reader at the side. It just won't do it. Just won't do it. Anyways, we have an Intel Q445, Q43 Express chipset, which, uh, of course, uses the RAM. I got 8 gigs of RAM, like I said. And let's check out the processor. Processor's dual core at 3.6 gigahertz. And ladies and gentlemen, that's what we got here. So let's run this thing through a bit of a benchmark. Let's find a pass mark benchmark and see what kind of score we get compared to what I usually get. Pass mark benchmark. This is great for benchmarking regular stuff. Great for benchmarking, uh, well, video game type stuff. A lot of people ask me why I review everything, why I benchmark everything with a gamer benchmark. And the answer is because reasons. Because I choose to. And because everyone always asks me, everything I ever benchmark, if it can run Fortnite, or if it can run Grand Theft Auto. And I'm telling you right now, this thing ain't running Grand Theft Auto because the, the GPU is, there's, it's, it's just horrible. It's, it's nothing. But I will show you what happens when the 3D stuff kicks in. Let's go. I'm wondering what the system requirements for Fortnite is. Maybe I can try it. What is the system requirements for Fortnite? On the website servermania.com, they say, NVIDIA GTX 660 or AMD Radeon HD 7870 equivalent DX11 GPU. Do you want a little more context? Yeah, I do not have that power here. Oh, look at those planes go. Three frames per second. Okay, I've never seen anything like this. A uh, requested level of anti-aliasing not supported. Rendering without score will be... P he doesn't even tell me what it's going to be penalized at. That's amazing. That's amazing! Uh, it seems to have crashed. So it usually does the, the planes, and it just trees on rocks, and... I think it just died. Oh! Fail! It couldn't handle the power. Stop code. Video TDR failure. I'm not even getting a benchmark off this bad boy. That's amazing. That's amazing. Yep, I just gave her a second try and a second crash. So, let's see what kind of video games we can get to work on this bad boy. You guys remember the Angry Video Game Nerd? This is one of the easiest games I thought that I might actually be able to pull off on this piece of junk. Oh man, I forgot how foul mouthed this guy was. They're probably not going to be able to monetize this stuff now. Angry Video Game Nerd plays relatively well. Can't complain. I'm not seeing any uh, sharks at the bottom of pits or anything just yet, but it's early in the game, of course. Oh yeah, Metal Jesus, Battle Jesus for the win! Oh my God! Check out this beat him and eat him level. This is amazing! My goodness! I, I'm gonna have to rate this uh, 18A now. That's what I'm talking about. I got my sharks. I got my pitchforks and all that fun stuff yeah next game as you would expect ultimate doom keeping up flawlessly no problems no drop in frames all very nice chewy 
We're home. Team Fortress 2. Can it pull it off? What casual level? One? Do you guys have any idea how many hours I put into this? At least 500. This must be uh, after my time. 50,000 people used to live here. Now it's a ghost town. So Team Fortress has definitely given me a little bit of lag. It doesn't look as good as I remember. But then again, do I even remember it right? Let's face it. It, it is relatively smooth though. Team Fortress 2 is the first game that I really paid for. This was the first game I actually slapped my credit card down for. And oh, it's good. Oh, that guy just nailed me with a headshot. It's always good if you get these guys in the corner when you're a soldier. Your area of effect can really mess them up. But yeah, it isn't exactly how I remember, but it isn't bad. There's a second lag. Right now I got this thing hooked up with wireless and Wi-Fi, but I hope that uh, it's not just going over to the Wi-Fi. But yeah, pretty smooth, I gotta say. I am pretty happy with this. Unfortunately, can't play much more than this. Can't play much more than anything that uh, is the age of the unit itself. Look at these guys. They're not even pushing the cart. I can sit back here and just blow random nades in there. Or RPGs and still do something. What are they? Maybe they don't want me to be running this thing? I don't know. They're just here for the fun? I don't know. Anyways, ladies and gentlemen, that's it from me. Nev from Nev's Tech Bits. Like and subscribe if you like this stuff. It's always appreciated. And as always, folks, take care of each other. Don't be frickin' taking over blocks of your own frickin' city. Don't be taking over City Hall. Looking at you, Seattle. Yeah. That's what I'm talking about, ladies. Rrr.